Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joey Nightingale. And today we have landed right here in Farmingdale on Long Island in New York. Now, when people think of Long Island, they might be thinking of the beautiful beaches and stuff huh. like that. But they sometimes overlook how important history and aviation is here on Long Island. It's so important that Long Island has two, at least I know of, there might be more, there might be more. aviation museums. Mm -hmm. We've already done Cradle of Aviation, and right now we are going to do the American Air Power Museum. It's right there behind me. You think of stuff like Charles Lindbergh did the first transatlantic flight leaving from Long Island. Mm -hmm. Brumman was from Long Island. Mm -hmm. So it only makes sense that we do have another museum for aviation yep. right here. Yep. And we will put a link down below for that Cradle of Aviation Museum we've already done. But now you get to see this one. But before you do, you should do those few things that we like you to do. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, comment down below. And if it's your first time, welcome. We appreciate you checking us out. And if it's not your first time and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do it. All right, but let's do this. So we usually land. Are we taking off? Oh, no, we're not going on a plane. We're just going to a museum. So I guess you step right up. Let's go for this ride. An American Air Power Museum. We are actually connected to Republic Airport. You can see it's in an old airplane hangar. We actually never been to this museum. I love airplanes and everything about aviation, but I'll be honest, I'm very ignorant on the subject. I don't know engines, I don't know plane types. I just think they're cool. So we're coming in this on that mindset. First times here, the love of aviation, but not the knowledge behind it. Cool planes. We're gonna look at some cool planes. That's right, Joy, cool, cool planes. planes. American Air Power Museum entrance, welcome. Well, that's different. We get to enter through the gift shop. Already starting with some little models of planes. And also some early flight suits. So we just entered into the big hangar. I like how it is set up. It just is big planes and a big hangar. It's pretty cool. I guess walk to the right maybe? Go around. This is cool. Talking about camera equipment. This pair of Nikon 35mm cameras and lenses were custom built for NASA for space shuttle programs. These camera lenses flew on the following missions. There are a lot of missions listed. Some old Nikons. And you can see we're talking older missions because that's a film camera right there. You see where you would advance the photo? Mighty Mouse, here I am to save the day. Mighty Mouse will blow you away. The Mighty Mouse. Folding fin aircraft rocket. We have this awesome model. I always am a fan of miniatures and models of the I-400 class submarine used during World War II. See, this would be a Japanese submarine. I like, I've never seen anything like that. A submarine that actually has the plane stored in it so the planes could take off from the submarine. So weird. What's even crazier is like how big it was compared to like the other The Germans in the US, yeah. I love their soda vending machine area. It's set up to look like a canteen with the woman from the USO selling you your Coca-Cola or your hot cup of Java Joe. That's a cute little spot to have your little uh, snacks put off to the side. It looks like the way we first enter, going down to the right. We first pass all the miniatures. I guess we start off small and work to the full-size versions. Get to the chopper. Flag flown at the USS Arizona Memorial. America remembers 9-11. This was flown September 11th, 2008. And of course the USS Arizona is the ship that was sunk during Pearl Harbor. It's interesting because we have some German planes. We have some British uniforms. We're looking at the Japanese stuff. It is interesting that 
it's not only about American aviation and planes, it's all different countries that fought in the Great Wars. Battles of Memes, August 8th, 1918, on the Sami River, Northwest France. The crazy French Wars, World War One. You look at this and it really doesn't make war look that glorious. We actually have some letters from Private John Williams to his sister in Brooklyn, New York, letting her know that he received the knife that she had sent him. And there is that knife. We have our ready room. We have some maps of them figuring out their courses. Yeah, looking at the old life jackets. Imagine having to blow that up when you go in. Some more more early uniforms. Nice old cigar ash where you see it was made to fit the cigars. Early mess kits. Briefing room. These little like offset rooms are really cool. Look at this bomb. Donald Duck, he's gonna drop the bomb. I mean, Donald Duck was in the military. It only makes sense. I love the spiral on this one. I guess people get hypnotized as it's coming towards them from the sky. I do love, I do have one of these practice bombs at home. I don't know if these were initially practiced or they've just been deactivated. But my uncle was a custodian in the city schools of New York City. And there was one just left there and he gave me as a gift a practice bomb. It's one of my uh, fun things in my personal collections. All right, you're here for the briefing. We first land here. Then we're gonna follow this green string across to Berlin. Then we take the red string back to England. We're also gonna do some of these red swoopy lines, okay? So remember which course you have to take, either green string or red swoopy lines. All right, let's do it. It's cool, we have some historic books and some models. And it says, the books aren't for sale, but the models are. I only once built a plane model when I was young in Boy Scouts. We had a model night one time. It was a fun thing. I really do like that you can go into like, the little the rooms room. along the side. Yeah. It makes it more interacting fun. You might be wondering why is this big piece of rusty metal in this display with fish? Well, this landing gear was found in 2013 off the Shinnecock Inlet when it got entangled in a fishing net. And it's believed to flew out of uh, a strut believed to be off a certain plane that flew out of Westover, Massachusetts on April 7th, 1944 for gunnery practice over Montauk Gunnery Range. We have an exhibit now on the Tuskegee uh, experiment, which was an African American flight group in World War II. An officer of coverage. Forced by the Roosevelt administration to create a training program for African American fighter and bomber pilots. Critics of the effort sought to smother the Tuskegee experiment by appointing hostile, incompetent commanding officers. They succeeded in the bomber program, but they failed to understand the depth of commitment in the men appointed to the post of director of training for the fighter efforts. And it's interesting, this documentary it seems to be paused now, but it's narrated by Ronald Reagan. In this school, we actually have a list of the air combat victories from the Tuskegee. We have a model of an engine cut apart. This is an R3350 radial engine. And I said, I 
I was saying how I'm not good at knowing planes. Well, they're teaching us how the intake is, green, the stroke, the compression is blue, power red, and gray is exhaust. And we actually can step on this pedal and watch it go. Funny watching the pistons go up and down and making the engine work. I think it might have had a bigger propeller. Joy stepping on the pedal, making the propeller go. Task version could be set at 0.3, 1.55, up to 170 kilotons. Let's just think one kiloton is equivalent to 1,000 tons of dynamite or TNT. Yes. It's an inert. That was the word I was trying to remember. An inert practice bomb. Tactical version could be set at 0.3, 1.55, up to 170 kilotons. Let's just think one kiloton is equivalent to 1,000 tons of dynamite or TNT. We have a plane named Second Chance with a woman in a leopard bathing suit with some dice. still working on the batteries, changing oils, it looks like. It's cool knowing like these planes probably can still fly. I love how close we could get. This is a Fairchild J83, a turbojet. You can see them launching it. Literally, I'm, those are my feet. Here's a turbojet. This is pretty cool. History in motion. Little kid. Cutting his bread. I guess we're trying to see what it was like during times of World War II because we actually have the, the rations that were given out. So there we have our sugar ration. I love the old bear aspirin bottle. Mom got her cast iron frying pan about to make some eggs on the gas stove. I always love these signs. Benefield, 32 miles, Pearl Harbor, 4,968, and the restrooms, they're, they're right down that way. In the next building, as a Republic Aircraft Engineer works on technical blueprints, a Long Island Newsday reporter interviews a test pilot preparing to fly a newly minted P-47 Thunderbolt. Over 9,000 of these planes were produced at the Farmingdale factory from 1941 to 1945. And there are the blueprints. You see Republic right there, and we're at Republic Airport. Like I said, the aviation history that happened here on Long Island is pretty amazing. And that Thunderbolt plant that we were just talking about, made here, there it is, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. And this exhibit of the woman working on the plane is talking about Long Island's own Rosie the Riveter. Women work on the Hellcat assembly line in Bethpage during World War II. Long Island on built the planes. Josephine Rachiel was one of the thousand Long Islanders who worked at Republic Aviation during World War II. Well, she worked at the factory till the factory closed, then she volunteered and worked here. That's pretty awesome. Learning all about Republic Aviation Corporation, Fairchild's Republic Company. Here is one of the planes built by Fairchild Republic in A-10 Thunderbolt II. We have the mile, and that was right here, Republic Airport. Schematics of it. Republic, this was our first post-World War II jet fighter, uh, and it saw combat during the uh, Korean War. Very cool. Uh, this is one of the few straight-wing F-84s still around. Uh, we received this from the Air Force under the condition that at night, or in bad weather, it stays inside. It's not a flyable plane, mm -hmm. so we usually keep it right here. How many of the planes in here are flyable? Because I see like that one's being, isn't just sitting here, I saw batteries being charged. And... Uh, one, two. At least six of them off the top of my head. Here we have the top 
you can see the control panels and actually behind the control panel part. <laughs> General was telling us the F-84 was the first plane that didn't have to be land to be refueled. It could be refueled in the sky. I'm playing first jet. We were telling you about Josie the Riveter, the one before. Now she worked there in World War II, but you think this was the Thunder Factory here at Republic Aviation, and it was 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And this is what it did look like, but now it is Republic Airport. It's crazy how this property changed now, but yeah. we're standing here. Just think there's a movie theater, a Stu Leonard's, <laughs> a Home Depot, and an airport now. Now, it was, the Intrepid was in service up until 1974. In the late 1940s, the jets started to be introduced to naval aviation. Mm -hmm. They were heavier than the World War II piston engine aircraft. Meaning it required a little more push to get them airborne. Mm -hmm. For that reason, the Intrepid and a few other aircraft carriers were modified. And it did see uh, three deployments off Vietnam during the Vietnam War. It's a weird thing now, it sits in Manhattan and a space shuttle sits on it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the C 47B Skytrain. So this one be transport, but it could carry some passengers. There is the plane with the paratroopers on it. Oh my god, too many knobs. <laughs> too many knobs and levers. <laughs> this right here is a generic Vietnam war scene. Mm -hmm. It uh, doesn't portray any particular battle. North American RB-25 Mitchell Bomber. You can go up here if you want. Called Mishap. I like this one mishap because you see where the pilots would be sitting, but then you see the front gunner is literally the tip of the ship, of the plane. This is an F-105 Thunder Chief. Uh, this was heavily used during the Vietnam War, especially in an operation called Rolling Thunder. That was the bombing of North Vietnam from March 1965 to November 1968. Uh, this particular one that the museum has is a single seat F-105D. Republic also built the two seat F-105F, which was a little longer to accommodate second cockpit. We have display on the POWs. They're not gonna talk. It's interesting. Prison of War is where actually have the numbers I can't even tell you. of POWs and the numbers of missing in action going through all the wars, well mostly all the wars, up through Star and Revolutionary War, up through Somalia. Interesting, the American Red Cross Prison of War food package. Marmalade, you can put it on your wild Alaskan salmon. I love the red label pork pate. All planned out, ground school, etc. The major said if we had a minute to ourselves, he had slipped up on Woman something. Woman who brought the war home. What with all this air, wind, and sun, and physical training? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Watch your head. <laughs> yeah, or it's gonna And go. watch your step. Yes, and watch your step. Are you the pilot or the co-pilot? Hmm. You choose. You're up there. I was going to be the gunner. You're going to be the gunner? Can you actually get into there? I'm going to go look. <laughs> oh, holy. <laughs> oh, I don't think it was. 
If they were putting kids in there during the war, that's a problem. No, I said now. <laughs> Could you imagine? Joy didn't think I could make it in here. But Joy, you're the pilot, you're not in your seat. We're going down. <laughs> what are you shooting? <laughs> and he left his post. Oh, that's cool how they put screens in with the window so you can see as if the other planes. Missouri, we've been on the USS Wisconsin, which is the same class of this at Winterfest, that created for Christmas, down in Virginia. We'll put the link to that video down below. Okay. Uh, MiG-21 was used by many countries that were allied with the uh, former Soviet Union. Uh, they saw a lot of combat in the Middle East, uh, in Vietnam. Our early, uh, early frontline pursuit aircraft at the very beginning of World War II. So because it has the flags, that would have been things that shot down, not missions? Yeah, that's what they would do. I don't think this particular one actually did shoot down. Yeah, just, it's just for decorations, yeah. yeah. We take people up for flights in that aircraft. That and beautiful. the one behind it, which is an AT-6 Texan. Uh -huh. uh, that's more of an advanced trainer that uh, pilots had to master before they went to an operational aircraft. Naval aircraft, you can see the folding wings. Torpedo bomber. This aircraft right here, this camouflage one, that's an F-84 F Thunder Street. That's a swept wing development of the original F-84 Thunder Jet, which was a uh, early jet fighter, had straight wings, but this one's a swept wing development of it. Mm -hmm. Right here we have an A-10 Thunderbolt II, sometimes called Warthog. This is a close air support aircraft. Uh, it's been around for a while. It first entered service in the so late 1970s. The it's been around for uh, 30 millimeter uh, cannon. It was built around the 30 millimeter cannon. Uh, they first saw combat in uh, Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Uh, another mission that it has been kind of a given is it'll escort helicopters on rescue missions. And this is an EA-6B Prowler. The Prowler is an electronic countermeasures aircraft, or ECM aircraft. The equipment that aircraft will carry that will try to confuse enemy radars. Uh, the Prowler first entered service in 1971, used by the Navy and Marine Corps, both 39 Albatross, uh, trainer aircraft. And these are the only jets that the museum has that fly. We do have a few aircraft over there that are ours. Okay. Going left, right to left, the uh, silver one, natural metal one, that's a T-33. Okay. It was our first operational jet trainer based on our first operational jet fighter, the F-80, which was heavily used during the Korean War. Mm -hmm. Continuing on, the aircraft in the middle, the camouflaged one, that's an RF-84F Thunder Flash. That's a reconnaissance aircraft, which is basically a photo-taking aircraft based on the F-84F Thunderstreak. Okay. Streak. Wow. Continuing on, uh, the next aircraft, the one on the left is an F-111. That has kind of a long history. Initially, it was developed to satisfy the tactical fighter experimental or TFX requirement. The goal, build an aircraft that would satisfy Air Force and Navy requirements. Okay. Didn't work out that way. I love watching planes take off and land as we are looking at airplanes this is so cool so so cool great spot if you want to see an air plane museum an american air power museum actually looking at airplanes as they're taking off is one of the coolest things in this world and that's what i like this is more aerospecific specific around the World War II era 
it's a cool museum. And I always love museums, like I say, where there's a guy that knows his stuff. And I mean, our guide was named Joe. And you never go wrong with a guide named Joe. Just, just letting you know that. Hmm, follow me, good message. You should subscribe if you haven't yet. Kilroy was here. And I love like, I was looking at these dioramas, not looking at the models up top. There's layers and layers of cool history and miniatures and models. And then you look over to planes that you could walk in and functioning planes. This air simulator is added on the museum. $10 for seven minutes. You could uh, fly the simulator. That's a cool extra experience. And if you do, you get your Mike Star Flight Simulator certificate. That's really cool. American Air Power Museum Memorial. I have slipped the surely bonds of earth and touched the face of God. And these are people that are here, but there's the woman they were talking about, Josephine. So there you have it, the American Air Power Museum. We came, we saw, we conquered. Ooh. And now it's starting to rain on us. So we're gonna say bye to you. I hope you liked it. Like I said, I walked in here not knowing anything about planes. I walked out knowing a little more. bit more. We had a very good tour guide, which makes a very big difference yes. in the experience. I would recommend this museum. It was awesome. I love aviation. I love American <laughs> history. And coming to an aviation museum and an airport, like I said, very cool. I mean, they're not at the airport. It's right next to it. Same, yeah. same land. The fact that planes built in World War II were built on this land. This building is from that time. Makes this even better. Mm -hmm. But I think we could call it. I think so. American Air Power Museum. Been Good there, done time. that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life.